So the next thing we want to talk about in the variations of Turing machines is a t-computable function. Now what exactly is a t-computable function? It is a simple function f that converts one string into the other. So when is that function which converts a string into another string t-computable? there is a limitation. The limitation is that there is some Turing machine M which computes it. So let us repeat this concept again. A computable function is a function F that A converts strings into an other strings. B, it is considered T computable if there is some Turing machine M which is able to compute it. So in other words, M always halts. And when does it halt? On input W. Whenever M halts, then F of W is on its state. Now variations on the model. Now we want to see can we change something in the Turing machine so that it becomes more powerful? So should we add some capability? Um, should we, you know, if we add some capability, will that Turing machine be the same as a regular Turing machine? Will it have more power? Will it have less power? Uh, so will it cripple the Turing machine if we take that capability? So, so this is the entire idea. So one thing, A, if we add a capability, then we have to show that the standard Turing machine can simulate the same. B, if the capability is removed, then the crippled Turing machine can simulate the standard one. So these are the two different things we want to see here. So, Take an example, what if we omit the stay in place option? So for example, suppose we have a Turing machine and we force the Turing machine to move its head each time. So right now, the existing Turing machine model that we have studied, it has the option to stay, to move to the right, to move to the left, the head. Now in this case, we want to remove the stay in place option. So every time it has to move. Now, if we were to achieve this effect of stay in place, what we can do is we can move the head of the cell and then immediately back again. So it is very simple. So if we move it to right, so we can move it back to left, next move. So that ensure that it is the same as the stay. So that proves that it has the same capability as the other Turing machine. Now how do we ensure that? Internally, we can create an intermediate state. So look here. This is the intermediate state. So what we're essentially doing here is that in case of this transition, which is delta Q, so delta is the transition function and we apply, we check for in the state Q, we got the input zero. And then in this case, we were going to move to the new state R. We're going to write down a symbol and then we do a state. So if we change that, so this was the original one. So we change that. So we change the delta so that from delta to zero, we actually move to the left as an example. Then we move to a new state, which is X. Now from X, we have another delta. And in this case, if it's a zero, then we let it be a zero, move to the right. If it's a one, we move to the right. Both cases, we move to the right. So we can write this down as delta x and then any. Any means 
either it's uh, any of the alphabet which is in this case either zero or which is this one or it's one which is this one so in that case we simply move back to the r so so this is an example of uh, Turing machine which is uh, simply has the same capability just by removing one of the possibilities which was to stay.